Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today we're answering another question from one of our members who wanted to know how to create a wavy effect like this in Cinema 4D. You can get your C4D questions answered as well by becoming a CG Shortcuts member over at cgshortcuts.com or on Patreon. Now let's hop into Cinema 4D and see what we can do. So this one was requested by Chris who wanted to create something similar to this shot from the Casper floating to sleep spot by Steelworks Studio where we've got a wavy mattress with objects sitting on top. I did a couple of different versions that you can download from the link below if you want to save a bit of time. Otherwise, let's see how we can do it. So I've got a few cubes stacked on top of each other here, similar to the example, with plenty of subdivisions so we can deform them nice and smoothly. So to make them wavy, I think the easiest way might be to throw all of these guys into a null and add a wind deformer inside here. And if we hold shift, that'll be placed inside our hierarchy here and start affecting our objects straight away. And you'll notice if we play this, we get a pretty decent animated wavy effect already. But we do want the wave going in the other direction. So I'll just rotate the wind deformer itself. And now the wave is looking too big. So let's take a look at the settings of our wind deformer. Let's drop the amplitude of the wave down to maybe four centimeters and try that. And the wave is much smaller now, but it's also traveling way slower. So we'll need to balance this out with some of the other settings here. Let's try the X and Y frequencies. I'm guessing the X frequency should go along the red axis. So we'll try increasing that to five and things are starting to look a bit more wavy. So let's check the animation. And it looks like the waves are coming from the center of the object, which we don't want. So let's just shift the deformer over to the side and see if that fixes that. And it does, but now the waves are larger on this side than they are closer to the pivot point. And I think that's because the wind deformer is set to flag mode by default, which makes it deform like a flag on a pole. So if we disable that, we get a more even wave across our objects, which looks like this. Then the Y frequency is going to generate waves in the other direction, which might also look pretty cool, but we don't actually need that for what we're trying to create. So we'll set that at zero. So we just have waves going along the length of this. There's also a turbulence setting here, which can give us some interesting looks, but we'll set that to zero as well, which pretty much gives us the look we're after. And as a bonus, this also now loops seamlessly. So if you use the same settings I've got here over 144 frames at 24 frames per second, which is six seconds long, it should loop for you as well. So now that we've got our wavy objects, let's sit another object on top. Let's bring in a sphere and we'll make it 20 centimeters in length and move it up here. The easiest way I found to attach it to the top surface of our objects was actually to put this inside a cloner. But we don't want any clones. Instead, we'll set this to object mode, which will allow us to clone our sphere onto another object which in this case is going to be this cube at the top of our stack. But we need to specify an exact point to clone to. So with this selected, I'll switch to point mode, which puts the mesh back into its original flat state, allowing us to easily select a single point from somewhere here in the center. And if we hit V on the keyboard to bring up the pop-up menu, we can go to select and store selection. So on our top cube, we now have this selection tag. So if we grab our cloner again, we can use that mesh as the object we want to clone to by dragging it into here, which clones a bunch of copies all across the surface of our object. But to get just one sphere onto the point we selected, we can drag the selection tag into the selection slot of our cloner. And we don't see anything yet because surface mode is for polygons and not points. But if we switch this to vertex mode instead, we get a single sphere right on that point we selected. And now that that's attached, it should follow along with the deforming mesh like so. But obviously we'll need to offset our sphere a bit so that it's resting on top of the cube rather than inside it. And we can easily do that back in our cloner under the transform tab. So let's just offset this along the Z axis to about there. And that's looking good. So to finish this off, let's make our sphere look like it's a bit more embedded into this surface as if it were made of a soft material like foam or something. So we'll grab our cloner and the top cube and bake those as a lembic. 
to turn the animation into self-contained objects. And we'll move these to the top. And for the sake of demonstration, we'll just remove everything else. So all we have left is our baked animation. And now we can deform the area under the sphere so that it looks like it's resting on there and pushing the material down a bit as if the sphere had a bit of weight. So I'll grab the cube and add a collision deformer. And under colliders, we can use our sphere. So we'll drag the actual geometry inside here into our collider object slot. And you can see that's already pushing things down a bit as if it was really resting on there. And if we play this, it's looking pretty good. Only it does look like it's floating a little bit above the surface, but we should be able to fix that in the advanced settings by decreasing the size, which is a bit like a collision margin. And if we grab this and move it in a bit, you can see how that's affecting the mesh interactively. So I think about there should look pretty good. And that is pretty much it for this effect. Don't forget you can save a bunch of time and download the project files at the link below. And if you found this video useful, you can also leave a like or a comment down there as well. And if you need a bit of extra help with Cinema 4D, please do get in touch or become a CG Shortcuts member, which gives you access to all our premium C4D training and time-saving resources. So you can fast track your Cinema 4D career. Just head over to cgshortcuts.com. So that's it for now. I'll catch you next time.